IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4. So with Internet Protocol version 4, our addresses are 32 bits in length. So that's 32 ones or zeros. When we convert that to decimal, we're actually going to get what's called the dotted decimal notation, where we have four numbers separated by dots. And those numbers might be something like 10.1.2.3 or 172.21.243.67, maybe 192.168.1.4. Those are all examples of a good IPv4 address. Each of those dots can be a number between 0 and 255 in standard IPv4 addressing. Each IPv4 address is divided into four separate numbers, and they're divided by the dots. And each of these divisions we call an octet because each of them has eight bits assigned to them. So for instance, if I took that last one, 192.168.1.4, if I wrote that in binary, it would look like we see there, with two ones and six zeros, and then 10101000000000001, and a bunch of zeros and 100 at the end. This is why we use decimal when we write it, but the computers understand it as binary. So IPv4 addresses are further divided into what we call the network portion and the host portion. And the subnet mask is what's going to help us define what is the network portion and what portion is the host portion. So basically if we look at a subnet mask and we have a 1 there, that's part of the host portion. If we have a 0, it's part of, excuse me, if we have a 1, we're part of the network portion. If we have a 0, we're part of the host portion. So, for instance, in this example, I have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. That would tell me every time there's a 255, that translates in binary to eight ones. So, in this case, my network portion is the first three octets, and my host portion is the last octet. So, my network is the 192.168.1.something network, and the host on this one happens to be the .4. So our classes of IPs, in IPv4, we have five different classes of IPs that we talk about. And each one has its own default subnet mask based on the first octet of the IP address. So by default, if you have a class A address, which means your first octet is between 1 and 126, your classful mask, or your default subnet mask, is going to be 255.0.0.0. And we uh, make a subnotation of this called a slash notation, which would be slash 8. So I can write my IP address like 126.2.3.4 slash 8 instead of having to write out the IP address and the subnet mask. That tells me what that subnet mask is. With class B, I have numbers between 128 and 191 as my first octet. And my subnet mask there is 255.255.0.0 or slash 16. With class C, we have numbers between 192 and 223, and our default subnet mask there is 255.255.255.0, or a slash 24. Class D is used for multicast, and that is 224 to 239. There is no classful mask there, and there is no classful uh, prefix for that either, because we're dealing with uh, multicast addresses. And class E stands for experimental. And those are 240 through 255, and you're probably not going to come across those in any business case that I can think of. So generally, you're going to be seeing A, B, and C addressing. Uh, and again, that's based off the first octet alone. So routable IPs. Um, essentially, IP addresses that are publicly routable are all managed by what we call ICANN, which is the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. A public IP, you have to purchase it before you can use it. You can't just take one out of thin air and use it, because otherwise no one's there to deconflict it and somebody else might be using it as well. Alternatively, we have subsets of IPs that are called private IP ranges, and these can be used by anyone. So these won't be routable outside your local area network, but you can use them inside your local area network. Now, if you're using network address translation, NAT, you can use this to route your private IPs and be translated into a public IP for use on the big internet. So when we look at our A, B, and C classes, each of them has their own private range that we can use. In the A range, anything that starts with a 10, so 10.0.0.0 all the way up through 10.255.255.255, those are all usable as private IPs. And the default mask for that is 255.0.0.0. Class B, on the other hand, we only have um, the first two octets that we're looking at, it's 172.16 up through 172.31. So 
So if I had an address of 172.15. something. something, that is public. You can't use it. But if it's 172.16, you could. And its default mask is 255, 255, 0, 0. Class C is 192.168. anything. So all the way up through that whole range. So if it starts with 192.168, it is a Class C private address. And its default mask is 255, 255, 255, 0. One of the other things, if you're trying to remember what these subnet masks are by default, if you think A, B, C, think 1, 2, 3. So A has one set of 255s, B has two sets of 255s, and C has three sets of 255s. And that helps a lot of students remember what A, B, and C default masks are. So we have some special IPv4 addresses as well. Uh, we have the loopback address, which is any address that's in the 127.something.something.something address. Normally we write this down as 127.0.0.1. We like to refer to this as the device itself or home or localhost. So as you see in the uh, funny infographic there, there's no place like 127.0.0.1, which is there's no place like home, no place like the localhost. The other range that we have that's kind of special is what's called the automatic private IP addresses, or IPPA. And IPPA are the addresses that start with 169.254.something.something, which are traditionally a class B address. Um, therefore, their default mask is going to be 255.255.0.0. IPPA is used if DHCP is not available. So when you have a, a, a machine set up for DHCP, and it tries to go through the DORA process, and it's not able to pull an IP, after a while, it just gives up, and it assigns itself an IPPA, an automatic private IP address, which means it's not routable on the Internet. So if you ever go to a computer and you see 169.254.something.something, you don't have a network connection, okay? So keep that in mind. So when we look at our special IP addresses, uh, we have our Class A, Class B, and Class C addresses. We want to be able to determine what is the network portion and what is the host portion. So in the first example here, we have 114.56.20.33. So what do you guys think would be the network portion of that? Should be 114 because of the 255 in the subnet mask. And that would tell us that that is our network portion and that is our host portion. For Class B, we have 255.255, which says it should be our first two octets, right? So it should be 147.12. And there is our host portion in green. For Class C, we have three 255s, so it should be, the, net, the network portion should be 214, 51, 42, and the host portion would be the dot seven. So in IPv4, we have three different ways that data can flow. The first is what we call unicast, which is what we use most of the time in our networks. Unicast goes from a single source to a single destination. So in our case, it's going from the server, you have the green and the red package. The green one's going to the dot one address, which is top PC. The uh, green one is going to the dot two address, which is the middle PC. And you can see when it gets to the switch, it is then pushed to the right person based on their MAC address um, that corresponds with this IP address. And so it's unicast, one message to one receiver. We also can have what's called multicast, which are all those class D IP addresses we talked about before. That's 224 through 239. And what happens is the receivers that want to be part of this multicast group will join the multicast group and have a secondary IP assigned to them as part of that multicast group, this 239 address. And so the, destin the traffic can go from a single source to multiple destinations. In this case, one message is sent from the server, but it's received by both the top and middle PCs because they wanted to be a part of the receiving group. The bottom PC didn't ask to be a part of the group, so he's left out. The third one we have is what's called broadcast. And broadcast goes from a single source to all destinations on the network. The most typical one that we use is a broadcast message to identify what things are on the network. And that would be sending something to the 255.255.255.255 address. And that goes to every device on the network. Every network you deal with is going to have a network IP. You're going to have your hosts that are associated with that network. And then there's going to be a broadcast IP. And we'll talk more about that later when we get into subnetting. And that is the basics of IPv4.